that moment, who should arrive at the door but Scrooge's nephew, Fred, his only living relative? Nephew Fred? I don't see him. Trust me. Hmm. Hello? Oh. Uncle? Rizzo. You're very good at that, Mr. Dickens. A Merry Christmas, Uncle Scrooge. God save you. Merry Christmas. Bah. Humbug. Quick, it'll be warmer in there. <laughs> Christmas a humbug, Uncle? Oh, you don't mean that, surely. Ooh, actually, I think it's colder in here. Mm. Merry Christmas, you say. What right of you to be merry? You're poor enough. What right of you to be dismal? You're rich enough. He's got him there, the old boy's speechless. If I could work my will, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips would be cooked with his own turkey mm. and buried with a stake of holly through his heart. Ooh. Well, not quite speechless. Mm. Oh, Uncle. Nephew. You keep Christmas in your own way, and let me keep it in mine. Christmas is a loving, honest, and charitable time. And though it's never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe that Christmas has done me good and will do me good. And I say, God bless it. Yeah. And how does one celebrate Christmas on the unemployment line? Now, in these times, it was customary on Christmas Eve for well-meaning gentlemen to call upon businesses collecting donations for the <gasps> poor and homeless. <gasps> Mr. Scrooge, I presume? <laughs> Who are you? We're from the Order of Victoria Charity Foundation. We'd like to speak to you about a donation. <laughs> ah, welcome. This jolly old gentleman here is Mr. Scrooge. He's very generous to charities. My dear nephew. At this festive season of the year, Mr. Scrooge, many of us feel that we must take care of our poor and homeless. <laughs> are there no prisons, no poor houses? Oh, plenty of those, sir. <laughs> oh, excellent. For a moment, I was worried.